everyone. Uh, Your Excellency, uh, Prime Minister Tepunia Mapon, um, Your Excellency uh, Patricia Tibe, the uh, Minister of Finance, the Government of the Democratic Republic of Congo, uh, Ambassadors, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Steve McDonald, the director of the Africa program here at the Woodrow Wilson Center. Uh, first of all, a little uh, housekeeping matter. Uh, if you need to tra translation, French to English or English to French, uh, it'll be on the same same channel, channel number one. And if you're in the audience, it's important to point your receiver towards the front of the room. Um, we welcome you here to the Woodrow Wilson Center for this important event uh, to hear His Excellency see the Prime Minister uh, speak to us about the, uh, the situation currently in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Give us an update on things that are happening there. Woodrow Wilson Center is very happy to be able to host this event this morning. Uh, as you all know, the Wilson Center is the uh, is the living memorial to President Woodrow Wilson, uh, established in 1968 by an act of Congress. And uh, quite simply, what we do is try to bring together the the world of ideas and the world of policy, something that Woodrow Wilson believed in. And these are the very kind of events that uh, that indeed do that. Um, uh, in doing my welcoming remarks, I would like to uh, to recognize our ambassadors in the room. I know, of course, that uh, Amb Ambassador Faida Matifu is here. For from the uh, Embassy of the Democratic Republic of Congo, welcome, and thank you for all you've done to make today happen. Uh, and I think in the room, at least we were told, that we have uh, uh, Sadie uh, Buddha, uh, ambassador from uh, uh, from Burkina Faso. Uh, whom I'm not seeing right now, and uh, 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 the master from Zambia, Fallon Malondo. Uh, uh huh. And uh, ambassador from uh, uh, Rwanda, James uh, Kimonyo. And uh, I think that's our diplomatic core. Um, we are a little bit late in starting because we are expecting Cynthia Kute, who's the Deputy Assistant Secretary of State for Africa, um, who's going to join. Join us on the podium, but she's gotten stuck in some very bad traffic, and so we do have to go forward because we have a limited amount of time. Um, before I introduce our speaker, uh, just a word about the Wilson Center and its relationship with the Democratic Republic of Congo. Uh, from January 2006, uh, to today, uh, the Wilson Center established something called the Initiative for Cohesive Leadership in Kinshasa, uh, a partnership that has conducted training workshops in a variety of places throughout the Congo, uh, Kinshasa, Matadi. 
Lakshmi, Lumbabashi, Goma, Bukavu, Batemo, Uvira, Baraka, Manim. Mbwe, Rachuro, Masisi, Bini, and Gassini in Rwanda, involving over 800 individual leaders. Uh, from both the political class and civil society, including leaders of national and provincial influence, militia and community leaders across ethnic and political affiliations. The ultimate goal has been to strengthen leadership skills and national cohesion by building trust and understanding of their interdependence and building their collaborative capacity and leadership skills. The leaders we have worked with have gained and enhanced communication and problem solving skills as well as their freshly understood common purpose to start impacting their respective environments and constituencies on both a local and a national level. To address their country's leadership needs for development and recovery. This is done through a series of workshops that we've been conducting over these uh, five years, six years that we've been involved. Of course, it's left to the participants to define the burning issues pertaining to their country and spell out their respective and collective engagements to begin to uh, address the problems and challenges that face their country. Uh, you, in fact, uh, Mr. Prime Minister, have worked with the ILC in the past, as you might recall. In March of 2011, you, when you were finance minister, uh, you organized a governmental seminar. And it was, I think, headed by your old friend, uh, um, uh, Sarah Mikhailov, uh, World Bank director, but Michelle Casa, our team leader of the ILC office was in charge of the leadership part of that facilitation. And he tells me, Mr. Minister, that you lost his presentation and uh, he is willing, of course, to follow up at any time on doing leadership training with you and your, uh, and the, and your government. Um, while our activities have been successful as far as they go, Many challenges lie ahead for the uh, Democratic Republic of Congo, and these are the challenges that we're going to be discussing today. Uh, um, as an organization uh, committed to Congo and a brighter future for the Congo, the Wilson Center and the ILC in Kinshasa welcome the opportunity to host you, sir, and to work with you in the future to overcome the many leadership challenges facing your country. Uh, I was going to, at this point in time, introduce Cynthia and have her uh, do the introduction for the Prime Minister. But in her absence, I will... Uh, I will fill that role and ask you to come forward, uh, Mr. Prime Minister, as soon as I've done. Um, uh, you have his bio in front of you. Uh, uh, Prime Minister Matata Ponyo Mapon uh, has previously served as finance minister, as I mentioned, from 2010 to 2012. Well, and was later nominated to his current post by the president. As finance minister, he led his country's successful entry to the IMF, heavily indebted poor countries program, the HIPIC program, before coming prime 
minister, coming prime minister. Um, uh, he had several governmental posts, including director general of the Bureau Central de Coordination and economic advisor to the Ministry of Finance. Prime Minister holds a degree in economics and international monetary flows from the University of Kinshasa. So I am very, very honored, sir, uh, to ask you to come to the podium and deliver your uh, address, and then we'll be taking some questions and answers from the audiences. in both this room and our overflow room downstairs. Mesdames et Messieurs, euh, bonjour. Et merci euh, pour cette invitation qui nous permet de euh, parler euh, de la problématique du développement en République démocratique du Congo. Le premier point, je vais euh, l'aborder euh, sur le performance économique de la République démocratique du Congo. Le deuxième point aura ah, à traiter sur le pesanteur qui freine la croissance économique dans notre pays. Et euh, la troisième question, je voudrais aborder la problématique des, euh, des conflits euh, armés et soutenus par des pays voisins et, et qui plombent le développement en RDC. S'agissant des performances économiques, nous voudrions euh, vous dire que la RDC réalise aujourd'hui des performances économiques tout à fait euh, remarquables. S'agissant de la stabilisation du cadre macroéconomique, nous avons euh, des taux d'inflation qui sont historiquement euh, faible. En, en 2012, par exemple, nous avons réalisé un taux d'inflation de 2,7%, ce qui constitue pratiquement une performance depuis euh, plus de 30 En 2012 aussi, nous avons réalisé un taux de croissance économique du PIB en termes nominaux 
de 7,2% contre un taux de croissance de la population de plus ou moins 3%. Donc, le flux de croissance est tout à fait euh, positif. En 2013, donc au cours de cette année, nous escomptons un taux de croissance de 8,3%, toujours avec un taux de croissance de la population de 3%. En 2014, nous escomptons euh, cette fois-ci dépassé euh, les caps de euh, taux de croissance à des chiffres. Donc, si euh, les efforts que nous sommes en train de réaliser En termes de réformes structurelles, en termes euh, de réformes économiques transversales, euh, sont maintenues. Si ces réformes euh, produisent les effets attendus, notre pays devra donc dépasser les caps des taux de croissance à des chiffres. La croissance économique se matérialise notamment par euh, la relance des infrastructures des bases, donc les routes qui sont en soutien. Voici réalisé afin de pouvoir réunifier ce vaste pays de près de 2 millions, plus de 2 millions 300 000 km. Les hôpitaux sont construits ou sont réhabilités. Les écoles sont construites ou sont euh, ré réhabilitées. Et les taux euh, d'emploi augmentent sensiblement. Nous devons reconnaître que we must acknowledge that this macroeconomic stability that is quite exceptional in terms of um, uh, Uh, currency, the Congolese franc is uh, an, um, a pair to with the uh, U.S. dollar. So our efforts, economic efforts, are nonetheless uh, impaired. by security issues. Several searchers, in particular Olye and Olfen, have shown that there is a relationship, a connection of cause to effect between security and economic growth.
all the results that we have uh, mentioned happen in spite of the challenges regarding security, especially in the east of the country, and especially two uh, territories in the north Kivu. This insecurity does not allow Now, the government to unfold, to um, apply uh, efforts, the efforts that are necessary to improve life, the life conditions in that part of the country. This insecurity also Um, uh, uses um, important resources that uh, were meant to go to towards the improvement of social uh, conditions in the country. This war started in February of 2012, and we have already spent on it more than 150 millions of US dollars that we have applied to um, the military operations there. You can imagine uh, that if this uh, 150 US million dollars Um, could be um, applied, directed towards uh, development projects, certainly the conditions of our populations, living conditions of our populations would improve greatly. So these uh, military objectives uh, are uh, pre prevented us from um, uh, moving forward with the Millennium, millennium Goals, which you you know, um, are uh, measuring, uh, are giving us tools to measure the improvement of social conditions of the population. So most sincerely, this war in the east of the country is a war that is uh, uh, damaging and preventing us from uh, progress in social economic conditions. Different studies, serious studies, led by an, um, experts from the, the UN at the prompting of the Security Council. The armed group M23 in the east of the country Uh, 
these this group was armed by a, a neighboring country that is to say a Rwanda for us this uh, um, report from the UN is is a professional report, a serious report, and that is important for the international community um, that the U.S. Um, uh, take into account this dramatic, very uh, serious um, situation where a rebellion is, is uh, um, fomented by a country that has has the support of the international community. What I am saying is uh, explained in a panel of ex in the report made by a panel of experts from the UN. It seems important to us to say, to be able to say, that the international community must examine carefully the causes that are um, uh, the causes of this insecurity. And this ins because this insecurity creates um, human circumstances that are impossible to accept. Um, women are uh, uh, killed and children are um, enlisted into uh, Uh, wars and armies, and so we uh, we must bring this situation to a halt. This war also um, encourages. Um, the uh, all that is related to the uh, to um, mining the mining industry some neighboring in countries are also able to export Port mining products uh, beyond their capacities for production. The experts from the UN have identified the origin of this rebellion 
and they have identified it as coming from Rwanda between 2010 and 2011, the Rwanda exported 4, uh, more than 4,000 tons of uh, minerals, which is more than the production of that country, and also exported uh, more uh, 4,000 4, tons of cotton, which is more, again, than their own production. So uh, Rwanda exports more than it produces. So uh, how such rebellion and insecurity can favor, can sustain the growth of uh, some other economies that are supported sustained by the international community. I want to tell you you that the president of the Republic of Congo is very attached to the integrity of the unity of of our country and to peace in that uh, so region of the East and and also
uh, he cares very much. much about the integrity of the operation. So it is it's not possible that the international community tolerates this situation um, that that has been Um, I identified by the UN as coming from. from a neighboring country using uh, the mining rich uh, rich of our country. Negotiations in Kampala and uh, UN negotiations in Addis Abeba. We want all of these uh, consultations to benefit It from, from the uh, support of the great uh, uh, political party. powers in the world in particularly the US to support
uh, the continuous and sustained uh, um, successes of the of our our economy and we we want this support to be official and transparent. I thank you very much. Uh, merci beaucoup, Ex Secretary Ajou. Want at Darive Avec a person says excuse. Eva Parley of Andrew Kitmiller.